Hello and welcome to this tutorial video on using the Band in the Box DAW plugin with Nuendo. This video will teach you the basics of using the plugin. Let's start by creating a new project. These steps will also work if you have an existing project, of course, so you can open a project if you want to. Once you've created or opened a project, you should be at the main mixing window. Now before we go any further, let's make sure that the DAW has found the Band in a Box plugin. To do that, click on the Studio menu, then click on the VST Plugin Manager. If you check in the VST Instruments section, you should see the Band in a Box plugin in the list. If so, great. If not, please make sure you have run the main Band in a Box setup program as the plugin is installed from there automatically. If you're certain you have run the setup program but you can't see the plugin here, there are a couple things we can do. Try clicking on the Rescan All button to scan for plugins, or check in the block list. If the Band in a Box plugin is in the block list, select it, then click the Reactivate button in the Plugin Information section. Either way, once we've made sure the plugin has been found, we can close the Plugin Manager. Now let's add the Band in a Box plugin to the session. To do that, we need to add an instruments track. Click on the plus button above the track list, or press T on your keyboard. Then select Instrument and select the Band in a Box plugin from the menu here. Now add a name for your track if you like, then click Add Track. This will bring up the Band in a Box plugin. If this is your very first time using it, there are a few setup steps we'll need to cover. First, click on the Preferences button to open the plugin preferences. Then click on Folder Locations. If all of the folder locations are listed in blue text, then you're good to go. However, if they're in red text, we need to set up the correct location. The easiest way to do that is to click on the Find Folders button. This will try to automatically locate the Band in a Box and Content folders and is usually the most successful. Though if you've installed Band in a Box into a custom location, you may need to manually select the folders. If that's the case, click on each Select button in turn, then navigate to each of your install locations and click Open. Once you've done that with all of the locations for Band in a Box, Real Tracks, Real Drums, and Saved Tracks, then you're ready to go. While we're here, let's explore some of the other preferences. The General tab covers language selection, color scheme, as well as the defaults for new sessions, styles, and some of the controls. The Rendering tab covers how the plugin renders your tracks. For example, you can have your tracks rendered flat, which removes any additional EQ, dry, which removes any extra reverb, center pan, which removes any left-right panning, normalize, which maximizes the volume of each track individually, and so on. These first few options will change how your song sounds if you started the song in the main Band in a Box app. However, this can be beneficial, as when mixing in a DAW, it can be better to start with a blank slate, so to speak, and add any EQ, reverb, panning, and volume automation in the DAW itself. Lastly, the DAW Settings tab controls how the plugin responds to the DAW and vice versa. These are somewhat more advanced controls and are typically best left at their default state. However, it's good to familiarize yourself with these options just in case. If you want to find out what each of these options does, or any other option in the plugin, simply hover your mouse pointer over each one and a hint will pop up. Now that we've set up the folder locations and explored the preferences, it's time to make some noise. If you've already written a song in the main Band in a Box app, then we can open it by going to File, Open, then finding the file you've saved. I have my songs in my music folder for easy access, however you can open or save files anywhere you want. If you're starting a song from scratch, you'll see here that the chord chart is empty, so let's go ahead and type in a few chords. Once you've done that, you can set how long your song will be by double-clicking on the end bars and typing in a new length. You can also set how many choruses or repeats your song will have, as well as choose whether or not to have a lead-in or ending for your song from these two checkboxes. Next, we'll need to choose a song style. To do that, click anywhere on the current style name to open the style picker. If this is the first time you've opened the style picker, then you should rebuild the style list first. Click on the Rebuild button at the bottom of the window, then choose the Fast Rebuild option and click Yes. This will take 30 seconds or so to build a complete list of Band in a Box styles, as well as your real tracks, drums, and other content. Once that's done, we can choose a style from the list. You can simply scroll through the list, however there are thousands of styles available, so that can take some time. There are some search options at the top of this window that can help narrow things down. For example, if you know the genre of song you're writing or the tempo you want to use, you can choose those from these menus. 
or right above those, you can type anything you want in the filter box. You can also listen to a demo of each style by double-clicking on it. Or if you want to load up the demo song, you can click on the Load Song Demo button here. But be aware that if you've typed in your own chords already, they'll be lost if you open another file. Either way, once you've found the style you want, click OK to go back to the main screen of the plugin. You'll see that it's now loaded the instruments from the style into the track table in the middle of the window. If you want to add any more instruments at this point, you can do so by right-clicking or two-finger clicking on an empty track and choosing any of the options here. You can add extra real tracks, MIDI super tracks, MIDI soloists, loops, user tracks, real drums, or your own WAV or MIDI file. There are multiple pages of tracks available here. The style tracks will be in the style section, plus there are utility tracks on the next two pages. One more thing to add before moving on is that the drums will give you a stereo mix by default. In most cases, this is fine, as we've done the mixing for you, and it can be fairly difficult to get drums right. However, if you wish to mix the drums yourself, it's possible to get drum stems for many of the real drum tracks. This means you can have separate audio tracks for each microphone that was used when recording the drums. To load drum stems for your song, right-click on the drums track and choose Select, Real Drums. If you can see this section with the different stem names at the bottom, then you can simply check the All Stems box, or you can select each individual stem separately. If you can't see this section at first, that means the current real drum does not have stems available. It's possible to select a different real drums for your song though. The best way to choose one with stems is to enable this checkbox for show real drums with stems. And to help narrow down an appropriate real drum, I'm going to uncheck these other two boxes, show if feel does not match, and show if tempo is out of range. This way, it only shows real drums with the same feel and tempo range as your song. As before, simply double-click on each one to hear a demo. Then make sure the stems you want are selected and press OK. This will add the drum stems to the Utility Tracks pages. Now at this point, you may notice the tempo indicator is flashing at you. This indicates that your DAW is set to a different tempo than the plugin, so we'll need to make them match. To set the tempo in the plugin to the tempo in your DAW, simply click on the flashing blue light here to automatically change the tempo in the plugin. Or, if the plugin is already set to your desired tempo, then click on the tempo at the bottom of the DAW and type your song tempo in. If your song is using a different time signature than your DAW, then you should change that by clicking on the three dots here to unhide the time signature, then click on the time signature and type in a new one. Now we're ready to generate your song. Click on the Generate button and the plugin will start creating the tracks for your song. Once it's finished, you can play your song to hear how it sounds. If it's not quite right, you can always go back to the style picker to choose a different style, or you can add or change instruments if you like, and click Generate to have the plugin create new tracks for you. When you're trying out different tracks and styles, the play and stop buttons and the progress bar above them will come in handy. Plus, you can double click any bar in the chord sheet to start playing from that point. Always remember, if you make any changes to the chord sheet, change style, or add or change any tracks, you'll need to click the generate button to have the plugin build new tracks for you. Now I feel like my song needs a little something else, so I'm gonna add another track here. So I'm going to right click and select a real track. Similar to when you were choosing a style, you can search from the filter box here. I'm going to add a bossa saxophone to this song. Again, you can double click on each one to listen to a preview, or use these play and stop buttons here. When you've chosen the instrument that you want, simply click OK. Now to generate that, of course, again we'll have to click on the generate button. Once you've got your song how you want it to sound, we can drag the tracks into the DAW. You'll do so by dragging the Wave or MIDI buttons into your DAW's main window, or you can drag all the tracks at once by dragging the blue All button here. Over on the right side, you may also notice some extra buttons. These will give you an alternate version of each track. For example, you can get a MIDI chart from any real track that has notation, or you can get a Wave render of any MIDI tracks. When you drag in the All button, the DAW will ask if you want these on one track or different tracks. For best results, choose different tracks. The DAW may also ask you to copy the files to your project folder. We suggest doing so, as it's much easier to keep track of things that way. 
You should also select the Convert to Project Settings option, otherwise the tracks might play back too fast or too slow. Once your tracks are dragged into your DAW, you can work with them just like any other recording. You can chop, splice, delete, or edit to your heart's content. As this video focuses on using the Band of the Box plugin, the rest is up to you. And that concludes this tutorial video. If you have any questions or you ran into some trouble, you should check out our support page for the latest information, instruction manuals, FAQs, or if you're really stuck, you can contact our technical support team using the contact information on that page. In addition, we have a very active user forum which is free to join and will get you in contact with thousands of Band in the Box users around the world who can share their own tips and tricks. Anyway, thanks for watching and as always, have fun!